I remember the first time that I worked for a female composer. I was an intern at the Goodspeed Opera House, and I got to work on a Janine Tesori musical. That was the first time that I remember being in a room where I wasn't the only female musician on the team. It was pretty astounding. The energy of that experience was different for me. I just remember I could be that, that there, there is someone who looks like me that, that is doing that. And I remember the command with which she spoke in rehearsal. And I also remember backstage talking about things like getting our eyebrows waxed and like women things <laughs> that I just had never, I, I had always had my professional life and my sisterhood of other women out in the world. And that was the first time that I felt them in the same space. I remember one time when I was in graduate school, Jenny Gearing was also in graduate school, and I remember walking down the street with her talking about a composer opportunity, something that we both should apply for. And I remember having a conversation about whether or not there was room for both of us. That was the first time that I thought, oh, if they're only going to pick one woman, is it going to be you or is it going to be me? And I had never had that experience with with any of my male colleagues. I remember walking away from that experience thinking, is it possible that there's not room for both of us? Is it possible that there's only room for one woman? But along the way, I met so many other women who were talented and who were skilled and deserved to be there too, that I thought, we've got to blow this theory up. This can't possibly be true. There's a woman named Shoshana Greenberg, who is a music theater historian. And I reached out to her and said, do you know, is there a timeline? Does this exist? She had written an article about female composers for another publication. And she said, well, I know a little bit about it, but I don't. So together, the two of us began looking at the research. We built the timeline, which is a timeline of women composers on Broadway. And it starts right around the, the early 1900s, the turn of the century, with a lot of women that were working in what we think of as the Irving Berlin years, you know, just sort of the reviews, the Zipfield Follies, and those sorts of things. And then Kay Swift, in 1931, was the first woman to write a complete score all by herself. And then there's a gap. And there, in what we call the golden era of musical theater, there is only really Mary Rogers for about 40 years, until the early 70s when you get Carol Hall and Mickey Grant. Now there are many. It is really interesting to me, that's the thing that the timeline revealed was the gap where when we think of Broadway's golden era, there really were no women composers. When you see who's on the timeline and you see who's missing from the timeline, it really makes you think about who got to speak and who didn't. And why were women's voices silenced? Why were women of color silenced? What Maestra is trying to do is look at what the history was, change the problems, fix them, so that more women have access, more women are allowed to tell their stories, and more audiences get to hear the diversity of stories that can be told when you have everybody participating in the process. My stress started because I was working on Sweet Charity. We were challenged by our director, Lee Silverman, to hire an all-female band. And it was really, really hard to hire an all-female band of women who were skilled, who could work at the off-Broadway level, who were members of the union. And we called many people trying to get resources for these women. Um, and in the course of doing that crowdsourcing, I started in a spreadsheet of who the women were, what their contact information was, what instrument they played, why they weren't available. When the job finally was staffed, I had this resource of women, music directors, players, that people started writing me and saying, can you share that spreadsheet with me? Can you share that information with me? That was when I started to think about how we could build a network, how we could link these women together. We officially became a 501c3, and suddenly there was a board of directors in place, and all these people that we had to report to, I thought, oh, this is this is way bigger than me. This has become a much bigger organization than just me and my spreadsheet, me and my little project. And it's been thrilling to watch it grow. It's grown exponentially in the last year. I'd like to think that there is a, a future version of the industry where you wouldn't think of hiring a music team without checking the Meister directory. It would become second nature that we have to make sure that we're, we're getting lots of different voices onto the team as we're creating our show, our score, our theater. 
Las mejores.